We are your home theater and AV questions answered. This is AV Rant. Want your home theater or AV question answered by Tom and Rob? Send it to question at avrant.com. Welcome to AV Rant. I'm Tom Antry and I'm here with Rob H. Nelson. Nelson snagged an open box SVS PB13 Ultra. Dang, dude, I hope you got some room. They also gave him a returning customer discount, so it pays to give them a call. He already had a 15-inch, 1,000-watt Infinity subwoofer, and he was hoping the PB13 Ultra would be a good match and be able to keep up. Well, the PB13 Ultra is bigger, mostly just from front to back, and it <laughs> plays lower, and it doesn't bottom out, which he managed to make his 15-inch Infinity do with Edge of Tomorrow. So <laughs> it was able to keep up. And by keep up, it means kick that other one's butt. He also discovered that using two subwoofers made the bass more uniform throughout his room, which is something we've never, ever talked about on the podcast, right? (laughs) Never. (laughs) Tell us more about this even bass you experienced. Is that like the unicorn of audio? (laughs) You are the first. The first to ever You should write a book. The use of two subs on AV Rant. (laughs) You may have just created a new revolution in subwoofer usage. <laughs> you, sir, are a trendsetter. Is this Nelson? It is Nelson. Nelson the trendsetter. Got a, got a nickname just like that. Oh, man. I'm never going to remember all these. That's all right. <laughs> all right. He, uh, but, 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 but seriously, it actually works. He was surprised yes. to find. He did find out that he needed to manually change his settings on his Marantz uh, SR7010 to two subs instead of one prior to rerunning Odyssey, though. That wasn't something uh, That was something he didn't notice the first time or maybe the second or the third or the fourth or the <laughs> whatever. Anyway, his question. But he caught it. He has discovered new rattles in this theater. His projector sits oh. high on the shelf at the back of the room, and now it shakes so much it doesn't even stay aimed at the screen. Mm, that's a lot of shaking. Is just blue tack on the feet of the projector enough, or is there something else he should be doing to reduce the shaking of his image? Uh, bungee cords, I guess. <laughs> <It's> a bungee <laughs> well, that bad boy down. I'd, uh, um, I, I'd decouple your sub. Yeah. The sub itself, I would decouple from the floor, or damp would be the proper term. Yeah. Uh, but I, I would want to put something squishy under that big old sub. Now, he does uh, have carpet. Comes. We've got, got an image. Here it comes. Well, there's there's two easy ways. One, you call SVS directly. You say, hey, give me some of your subwoofer isolation feet because they have their sound path subwoofer isolation feet. That actually is my preferred recommendation now because they're cheaper than the thing I always used to say, which were the Oralex Gramma risers. They got cheaper because I thought they were more expensive. Nah, the Grammas got more expensive. Uh, because that when I when I did the review of those things, uh, the Grammas were less, and I was like, I was yeah. having a real hard time right. getting behind the SVS things, considering, yeah. You know, and the Grammas. given what the Gramma riser is, which is it's a piece of MDF yep. with some industrial carpet on it yep. and some pieces of foam below. Yep. It. There's no way it should cost as much as Oralex is charging these days. I'm not happy about that. Yep. It still works. You could make your own. <laughs> There's really nothing magical about it at all. It's a piece of wood with some carpet and some foam underneath it. It's a squishy thing. Uh, But if you want something that looks nice and you won't even notice it's there, you get those SVS isolation feet. That will, it's not going to fix everything. It's not a panacea, but it will help. Right now, your sub is in direct contact with the floor. You might not know it, but it is physically shaking your floor. Your floor is connected to your walls. Your walls are connected to your ceiling. Everything shakes. So you can help damp that first and then also the blue tack is also a good idea i would do that too oh my goodness i can't believe he didn't say it all right well that's weird oh. uh mouse pads underneath your projectors oh. is is <laughs> I don't, is the solution he was looking for mouse pads are slippery i don't know if i'd do that. oh they're know. not that slippery shut up you turn them upside uh, well, down they're... or something i know but they'd be fine hey could... no i i like blue tack better that'll hold your projector better in place that's true. but helping to reduce the the vibrations that are causing the projector to vibrate in the first place is also a very good idea. So attack this on two fronts. You help secure and damp the projector, yeah. and you also damp the subwoofer. On a serious no- note, though, but on a, a serious note, Nelson, uh, congratulations. Yes. This is, this, is what it, this is what it's about. Isn't it fun? Isn't it nice? <laughs> the, these are the kind of problems. These are the kind of the first world problems we look for on this podcast. <laughs> 
Yeah. I did not know my window did that when I played that note. And like that's because you've never played that note before. So, that's right. or at least not that loud. Congratulations, sir. Welcome yep. to the club. Uh, does a membership do? I don't know what it is. I think it's like a quarter. Want your question answered? Send it to question at avrant.com. is A.V. Rant. Now go out and listen to something.